Christina Lindover? Here. Bob Nell? Present. Craig Sims? Here. Chris Dover? Here. Johnny Brodzik? Here. And Rachel Wilson is present. Okay, we'll start with our public hearing, a motion to open the public hearing. Uh, uh, 701. Second. Roll call, please. Uh, Chris Dover? Yes. Lucy Nolenover? Yes. Tracy Monkowski? Yes. Rob Nell? Present. Yep. Just say yes. Why not? Just a motion to open the public hearing. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Craig Zimmer. Yes. Genevieve Brodzik. Yes. And Rachel Vincent. Yes. Okay, so we have the zoning, rezoning consideration for parcels stated below. So we will um, address as we did in the past each parcel independently. Uh, parcel 063322018, located at 58680 Victoria Street. Would anyone like to speak on this property? Um, I'm sorry, can you repeat the number? Would you like to, uh, what property, sir, would you like to speak on? I'm here to speak on behalf of the two ending 019 to 012. 019 and 012. Okay, is anyone here to speak on property ending in 018? No. No? Okay. Hi, please state your name for the record. Hi, good evening. I'm Justin Morgan. I'm uh, here on behalf of the parcel owners for <coughs> parcels 2606332261019 and also parcel 2606332521012. We're here uh, to uh, appear in front of the commission to formally, formally object to the proposed rezoning of these properties from light industrial to residential office. <clears throat> the three, the, the, the proposed changes are number one, not consistent with the master plan. I spent all last night reading the master plan, by the way. Two, I cannot determine, nor have, have has anyone here been provided with any reason that this is in the best interest of the public? And three, the property owners and operators of these parcels will be significantly prejudiced from changing it from in light industrial to residential office. First, the proposed changes are not consistent with the master plan. The master plan speaks glowingly of light industrial. On page 54 of the master plan, the master plan states, land reserved for industrial purposes provides important economic benefits to the community. Not only does industrial development offer a source of jobs, it makes a strong contribution to the village's tax base. The master plan also mentions that there's significant demand for light industrial and that the village must maintain at least 150 acres of land designated as light industrial to keep a very favorable industrial generating tax. The master plan continues that its number one goal is to ensure the long-term viability of industrial zone property on page 56 of the master plan. The master plan references consistently throughout. And I have what I'm going to ask to be put in the minutes, outlined at least a dozen different spots in the master plan that identify the desire for the village to have industrial zone properties. The change, the proposed change here, does not ensure the long-term viability of industrial zone property. In fact, it does the opposite. Conversely, the master plan makes no mention, well, excuse me, it makes a single mention of residential office in a paragraph, which I have included in my handout here, and it suggests that residential office zone property should be in 
a downtown district or, or nearby, and I've included a map that was the future land use of where the office uh, district would be, and it's not remotely near this area. In addition to not being consistent with the master plan, a zoning change that is not does not serve a legitimate public purpose is unlawful. I'm not saying there may not be any public purpose, but to date, I have not been provided one, and I've made several requests. The, what we do know is the tax base is reduced from changing it from industrial to residential office. Also, when you look at the zoning ordin ordinance for residential office, which is New Haven Ordinance 5141. It lists all of the things you can do with the residential office. And to name some of them, you've got general office, professional office, service office. Those same things are included in what you can already do in the light industrial zone property. Number letter G for light industrial zone property says you can have a general sales, service, and professional office. So the moral is you can have an office in an industrial zone property, but you can't have an industrial zone property in, a, in an office. So you're only taking away rights by making this change. You're not adding any utility to the properties, lost tax space, lost utility. Finally, and most importantly, there's significant prejudice to the current users and owners of this property. Two of them are here tonight. The first is 26063312. That's a property that's being operated by Dale Miron. He runs a local business here in town that serves many of the uh, members of the village and his his um, use of that property is conditioned under a land contract which he entered into several years ago that's fundamentally altered by this change the second property is owned by the uh, sur uh, surviving spouse of George Drake that property also has multiple commercial uses one is there's a cell phone tower on that that's been leased to a cell phone company for a number of years. I don't know if they provide a notice or if they know about this proceeding at all. The other is a, um, uh, a machine shop that George Drake used on that property for many decades and poured his life into working uh, on um, the stuff in his shop and for the village to change this zoning code after many many years to take that away seems arbitrary and capricious <coughs> the third property i know i didn't say i was here to speak on behalf of it but it's 2606332601 that property is a warehouse and that property has nothing else on it besides a warehouse if you make the zoning change, that'll become non-conforming. In fact, all three properties will become non-conforming. There's not one office in the area. And as somebody who's filled in offers for two of those properties, no one's calling to put an office in over here. These properties are located next to a railroad. Common sense says no one's putting an office there. And there's people here who can testify to that too, that no one's interested in putting an office over there. So I asked the commission to provide us with the reason why this would be in the public's benefit because all I can see is there's no tax reason for the change. The utility of the land is decreased. And you're hurting several members of the community and businesses by making that change. So I asked the commission to support the local business owners who would be affected by this and to not act in making this change. And 
Finally, I just want to point out, if there is some other reason that the commission is thinking this change makes sense, perhaps, and I'm just theorizing because I don't know, some type of blight issue, this is something that the owners and operators, I think, would be open to discussing, if that's what the real issue is. But it doesn't seem like this zoning change is in the best interest of New Haven, the parties affected, or consistent with the master. And I do have some notes here that I'd like to have part of the minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, could you give them to our secretary? Thank you. Okay, would anyone else like to speak on behalf of the properties? No. No? You're good? Okay. Um, a motion to close the public hearing at 7 11. So moved. Support. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> motion carried. Okay, moving on to the approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Um, public comments on agenda items? Anyone? Uh, approval of the minutes from our regular meeting dated February 1st, 2022. Did everybody get a copy of that? Yes. Yes. Is there a motion for those? Motion to approve as presented the uh, February 1 meeting. Support. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion. Any opposed? Motion carried. Okay, we have no communications, correspondence. Uh, matters for consideration, old business, uh, zoning, rezoning, um, no, item number one, parcels uh, 0633226018, 58680, Victoria Street North, 0633226019, Victoria Street, um, and parcel 0633. 2520125858580 I just have comments. Um motion. You want a motion or well, I was gonna make a motion. Should we make the motion and then just sure. or discuss sure. it? Or? Sure. Um due to the request I would like to table this item until our next meeting. And is there a second on that? Second. Discussion? I just wanted to make two comments um, to the what the gentleman brought to us, and that is, even if we do change the zoning, the property will remain as it is until it is sold or inoperable under those uh, that zoning for a six-month period of time. I just want to make sure everybody knows that, right? So it's not forcing anybody out or closing the business or anything like that. And number two, the, this discussion was led because we're working on a new master plan, so our zoning is matching our new master plan. Okay, correct. Just wanted to make sure I was understood. Correct. Thank you. Any other questions on it? I don't have a question, but my my uh, comment is going to be that we, we, we keep tabling this. And I, I, I think we're, you know, we're at a point where we see let's deal with it. Or let's just take it off the take it off the table. I mean, because it's it's been on the table now for three, four months. Well, no, this one's been on for eight months because it's a different. But yes. But I mean, we're we're talking about rezoning. We've been dealing with rezoning. We've sent a number of items to council already. And these three keep being tabled. And so I guess what I'm saying is, you know, let's either deal with it or, or um, you know, let's just take it off the agenda, period. I mean, because, I mean, what's gonna, what's gonna happen next month? I mean, you know, we've had two public hearings and, and so we've heard the concerns. Um, and if we feel that the concerns are valid, then let's just not do the rezoning. 
I mean, because, I mean, because what we're in effect asking these people to, to come back next month to find out what we're going to do. I mean, that's just my opinion. I mean, I, I would rather you know, deal with it or just take it off the agenda. I guess for me, the reason I, I motioned tabling is that they came concerned at the last. Twice now. Um, well, but I mean, taking more requests, I guess Thursday, and that if uh, Sean and the attorney, if there's something they can talk to them about and see if there's accommodations or, um, I mean, personally, for the long range of the village, I, I, you know, that's what we're doing this for. We're not doing it for, you know, yesterday or today. We're doing it as um, what we hope to create here with our new master plan. And um, so, I mean, I, I'm very positive for it, but I'm also, uh, uh, I would like to just rush and do it, but I also don't want to. I want to give people the opportunity to speak on it and discuss it and, you know, maybe there's um, ideas or, I mean, they're hard one way, we're hard the other way, maybe there's something in between or that works it out. That, that was, I don't want to see it keep going on either. Um, my position is to approve it, but my, I'm trying to, you know, there's a family here and there's their property that they've just inherited and um, I wouldn't mind if everybody was on on deck together with it. Has there been any other uh, conversation with Sean um, and John as far as any potential? Okay, so for I'm sorry, Mr. Morgan. 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 Yes. I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, there has been two spots. Okay, there were a couple contacts that you made with the village. Yes. Um, just in the last few days. I know you've had multiple other contacts, but in the last few days, which, um, and obviously he brought up some points tonight. Um, you've been requesting information and such over the last couple days. I personally just became aware of it yesterday and um, such. And so, I think that we owe it to both parties to review his concerns um, from a, um, a professional means as opposed to, you know, us who really don't have that. And um, our attorney would like to speak to you at some time. I was working beforehand to try to get you that contact information. That'd be great. So that they could have a conversation. Okay. Okay. So that is is where you know we're at. That this inf this communication and efforts to communicate. I know Mr. Morgan came into the office on Friday, correct? Yes, sir. And had sent an email out also on Friday, or I, I think I sent an email on Thursday, okay. and then I came in the office on Friday. Okay, and so it was received on Friday. So in in sense. Okay. In speaking to our representation, um, it would, they'd like an okay. opportunity to speak okay. to him about his concerns. Then I'm good with that. I mean, because there there seems to be some some ongoing dialogue. So yeah, and, you know, and, and this is information I didn't know. Right. It was. I did send out an email today. Like, well, <laughs> to be fair, it was late. You didn't read it while you were driving. Yes. So. Yeah. I was in airplane mode. Yeah. Yes, you were probably still in airplane mode. So I tried to sort of give everybody a heads up. Um, so okay. sorry if that did not. Okay. To you. So, um, any other questions on the uh, that? So we have a motion on the table. Um, you, is your motion to table all three? Yes, table all three. I just took it as being one. I guess I should have said one, one A, one B, one C. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And the second was from Luce. Yes. Yep. Okay. So um, we'll do a roll call on the motion just because. Uh, Rob Pinnell. Yes. Lucy Nolan Dilbert. Yes. Tracy Bonkowski. Yes. Chris Dilbert. Yes. Craig Sims. Yes. Rachel Woodset is a yes, and Jennifer Brodzik. Yes.
Okay, and Mr. Morgan, do you have a business card with you? I knew you were going to ask me that. I don't, but I, <laughs> well, let me check my bag. I don't mind. Okay, well, even if you just... I'll give you my info either way. Okay. Okay, the next on the agenda is the master plan presentation, adoption, discussion, and action. So last month we um, had a workshop and an opportunity for like final feedback on the master plan. Thank you. Um, did anybody want to have any more discussion on the master plan this evening? Um. I would like to table that. Again, I hate to use the word tabling because we want to get things done. Um, <laughs> but from, from me, um, this last month has been a no time of my life. It's only bowling and wrestling and my son. And that it's almost like every single night till these, uh, these uh, regionals were over this past weekend. Hallelujah. Um, so I have not read it cover to cover, and there's concerns that I, 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 I have. I would uh, appreciate we could put it off till next month. And because um, I, I, I don't know if you guys had time to read it since you've been back from vacation, but I didn't have time from Thursday till today to, to cover to cover it. And I can't, I can't vote on something that I haven't, you know, that's this important and this big to, um, unless I've. I've done all my my homework, and I apologize that it's not completed. But um, I don't know. Maybe you guys are in the same boat as me. <laughs> but uh, I have a life again, so I'm pretty excited to. I, I can promise you within the next two weeks to have all my notes back to you on. Anybody else? No. Okay. No, I'm willing to table it. Too. Opportunity he needs to, to review it more thoroughly. I appreciate that. Do I put a motion up? Um, I'd like to make a motion to table the master plan presentation, adoption, discussion, and action. Item number two of all business to our uh, April meeting. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Well, you know, so you're not gonna be at April's meeting, remember that? Yeah, that went to hell. What is it? Okay. <laughs> so you'll be, you will be here. Yeah. Okay. No, no, why? Why? Not be at April's meeting. <clears throat> I mean, don't change, make your changes, please. Well, it's spring break for the kids. Yeah. Oh, right. I was supposed here? to be going to Florida. We don't want to. Rob's going up. Oh, you're not going. Oh, okay. So you will be here. Okay, so. It's open for my first trip to Florida. I'm still in hand. So, carry on. Were there any, sorry, were there any objections on that? You raised I have read the cover to cover, and I brought my concerns to the, the as a body that we had, had, and I came prepared tonight. So, I'm an A. All right. <laughs> I think we've put it off long enough. I'm tired of tabling things. I, I agree with Chris. I don't disagree. Anybody else? Did anybody else? I really don't. I just wish that I Okay. Okay, moving on. It'll be on next month's agenda. That's what the fourth? What? I, I oh, that motion said all in favor. Did Rachel with the objection? I entered that Okay, Capital Improvement Plan Committee appointment, discussion, and action. Um, first, I will. Um, did everybody get the email about the Capital Improvement Plan Committee that yes. I sent out a few weeks ago? Um, is anybody interested in the Capital Improvement? We'll start with that. Volunteers? I would volunteer. Chris, Rob. I right. would defer to Crystal if he would, uh, wants to do that. Do you like to arm wrestle? <laughs> no? <laughs> so, okay, uh, motion for, um, do you guys want to just decide you're good with Chris? No, we should probably make it a motion to. Yeah. We, I mean, shouldn't we make a motion to? It, it's our responsibility to form the committee, isn't it? So should we make a motion to form it? I think we're just looking for the appointment of the person at this point in time. I think uh, it's been decided that 
So your committee is going to be made up of someone from planning, council, oh, yeah. park and rec, um, yeah. You know what, Tracy made me know the answer to this. Is it going to be, is the oversight going to come from council? It's on the next council meeting agenda yeah. to discuss. So we really don't know where the oversight is coming from, whether it's coming from here or there, but we, we have been asked for an appointment of a representative for the committee. I think, you know what, the oversight is going to go through council. I can answer this. It has to be. I, I was going to say, it has to, yes. I would think. I think just the, the, the paperwork has to process through planning. Okay. That's why I thought we had to create it. I guess it's all the interpretation of reading that stuff. Correct. It's like reading. <laughs> I did read that. <laughs> I believe like, like, like uh, Mrs. Bukowski was saying was that the council would kind of be overseers and managers of the commission of the committee that's being put together and that planning commission would make a recommendation for the adoption once the plan is completed. So it just follows the normal process of that. Gotcha. So. Yeah, the email from President Pridemore says we will be creating a plan, a program that will allow the village to create a schedule. So mm -hmm. to me that reads council. Okay. Well, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Chris Dilbert as the representative from the Planning Commission on the Capital Improvement Plan. Second. Second from Tracy or Lucy. Rachel. Or Rachel. Oh, Rachel. Lucy. Lucy. I did the second. I'll take it. All. Second. <laughs> second. All in favor. <laughs> uh, uh, any opposed? No. Motion carries for Chris to be the capital improvement rep for the planning committee. New business, we have none. Planners report. Uh, I made the updates requested from the uh, feedback we got from the workshop that we did okay. uh, for the master plan. So um, I worked with Sir Matt, um, and he kind of put together some of the DPW stuff for the water system and the uh, sewer systems and everything else. So we updated the language. Um, so it's represents what the current state of affairs is for the infrastructure. Um, so we've done that. Um, I updated the goals and objectives to reflect some of the uh, senior and elder care uh, facilities and added that to the housing mix, um, as well as the Gratiot Corridor Improvement, uh, the Gratiot Improvement Corridor District. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I added that yeah. into, the, into the goals and objectives as well. Um, so those were done, and then I double checked all of the, uh, the source material for the demographics, and they're accurate and like the latest of what they're accurate in terms of what's provided um, through these different portals and everything else. Whether or not they actually reflect the true reality, that's something that you can always like kind of debate um, what the projections are and what their assumptions are for projections, but. Um, it's, like it's the latest data that's available right now from some kind of census. So, and that's something too where it once like the full 2020 census data gets thrown out there, we can always update that stuff. It, it doesn't take much, it's just a simple plan amendment. And then we can just update just that section of the master plan. Um, the same thing with the 60 day review period, once we enter into that period. I just can be made throughout the entire 60 day review period because we're open to feedback from the community still, we're open to feedback from the jurisdictions because we're sending it, send it to all the parking uh, or the neighboring jurisdictions as well as the county, um, utility companies, uh, school district, they'll all get a copy. Um, so whatever feedback they have or concerns, which we've, we've done that for the Shelby Township National Plan, it just came to the county and saw something that needed to be updated and so they updated it. So it's, it's still possible in that 60 day period. So nothing's like permanent um, until it's formally adopted. And even then it's not permanent. So we can always amend it. Okay. Yeah. All right. I would like to comment that um, just, just even for the people at home or in the audience, these little boxes we're in, sometimes it's kind of hard to hear the voice unless it literally you hear it from the ceiling. Cause you're, oh, sorry. I was going to say the same thing. It kind of diffuses us. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I apologize if I've not heard things right, and I know you're not, so uh, it's, it feels weird in here. <laughs> okay, so that's it, John. You're good? That's everything. Okay, any public comments on non agenda items? No. Uh, call from the table. Um, 
I do have something. I spoke to President Pridemore yesterday, and um, she would like to address the sign ordinance. Again, in a sense of square footage of properties. So, for an example, you have a large industrial building. It was not discussed to the point of square footage or acreage, like what would be this bottom line, some metric that if you are so big with so much space, you get more signage. Um, as opposed to just the signs that we already have. Um, is that, am I clear? Is that? Is this, is this, is this yes. equating from the tractor supply? Correct. So again, if I, I can get a, I'll use um, where coyotes used to sit. So really one tenant could go in that entire building. Sorry, right, am I correct? One tenant could go in that whole building that he's building right now? You're correct? So then for every door, I get to put a, another sign or my square footage is larger than it would have been if I was just a small tenant, so I get several signs. Well, I'm sorry, I thought it was just the... It's not equal to doors. Do well, that signs? was, they wanted to use, they were, they wanted us to change it equal to doors, which I object to because... Oh. Okay. Yeah, there was some conversation right. about right. doors. So now this this pen is going by square footage, but again So that yes, so that a larger building would have more signs. You, you know, yeah, I had if you know I did have a conversation with John, like there was different aspects like a larger building, maybe two entrances gets two entrance signs as opposed to one entrance sign or um, what were some of the other there's, there's different prescriptions, like typically, it's, there's what we have currently, which is just, if you have a structure or a building, you can have one sign and you're governed by this many square feet for that sign, and then you get like a mining sign or whatever, I don't know, whatever the second sign is for the street within the right of way, or outside the right of way. Um, then there's other prescriptions like where you're gonna have um, different calculations, where we do it where um, you have the facade square footage. So they'll like, calculate, let's say if the building face is 10 feet tall by 100 feet long, that's 1,000 square feet. And then based on that, then you look at some type of like calculation that then tells you how large your sign's allowed to be within that. And then there's like a maximum. Um, there's other ones where if you have like multiple entrances, let's say like a, like a for example, like a Meyer or a Kroger, we have like a dual entrance. If you have two main entrances, which kind of is a contradictory statement, but if you have two <laughs> entrances, maybe one's more main than the other, um, then you're allowed to have two larger signs. Um, well, like Decorum has two entrances and exits. Yeah, which a lot of times the um, what happens is subdivisions are governed a little bit differently because you're having usually different street accesses and they're meant to identify the subdivision mm -hmm. and the entrance point. But um, that's typically how we'll look at it with, there's different ways of looking at it for buildings and structures and commercial things. Um, the issue there is just like, whenever you start doing these types of things, it becomes more and more complicated to apply. Um, and if the village is trying to do it by themselves or whatever it is, like you're gonna have to find somebody who's gonna come in here, learn how to do the calculation, apply the, the ordinance and then also like, govern and, and, and uh, enforce it. Um, which makes it, there's just more of a learning curve when you start adding those types of elements, like those performance and progressive scales and stuff like that. Um, and then the other thing too is just like, at what point is enough signage enough signage? It's just like, does everybody need like, to be able to project it to outer space? Like, do you need to just be able to be visible enough to crash it or whatever? Like, what? how much signage do you need? Um, and does your sign, can you do different things within your lot of square footage that's creative that identifies what you have in the building? Um, that's up to the person, the, the tenants at that point, to figure out what that is. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean the village needs to acquiesce and, and give people 500 square feet of sign space just because they can't figure out 
how do I confirm the regulations? I mean, we don't do that really with any other regulation, but that's how it works. So, um, yeah, that's just how my, my two sons of science. So. so what was the request I, for the conversation? Just, just to have a conversation as to how we feel about signs being, um, having a different metric, paraphrasing, for a larger building like, say, tractor supply versus a smaller building like Dollar General. Or a multi-tenant building. Or a multi-tenant building. Like, do we want, like, do we want to limit this store to this sign and this store to this sign? Or would we like to expand on this prop, this business? So, for instance, the, the uh, structure going up on Gresham 26 is uh, supposed to have four units. So those four units may be entitled to uh, 20 square feet, okay? But the, the uh, pylon sign identifying the whole plaza monument could be something much larger than that because it's identifying the whole plaza. I, I mean, I, honestly, I think it's a complicated metric. Myself, I think there, for every approach, there, there's a different, I think it's very complicated. I, I think it's not very cut and dry and it does open up to that, that exact interpretation yeah. where, you know, yeah, sure we have this, but yeah, ultimately because of the way we define it, we could end up with this. John. Yeah, and, I, and I know the other thing that I just saw as well, which is, constant issue and part of the reason why we looked at doing the ordinance, the side ordinance, as well as every other community within part of the country, um, is just the idea of regulating speech, which is a constitutionally protected right. So when you go down the, the avenue of like, well, you want to have a second sign for a second tenant within your structure and that, or with, let's say, like, with, let's say the tractor supply example, right? Now say, or like a Target, or they have, say, a CVS within their structure. If you specifically call out, like, well, you're allowed to then tell everybody that you have a second business with that sign, and that's all you can do with that second sign, it's allowed to be this size. Like, now you probably start wading into the waters of, like, you're telling people what they can put within that sign, and going in that speech direction. Um, and that's where it starts getting more complicated in terms of how, do, how that do you make the multiple science situation work. Like how do you identify what language do you use to make the regulation work where it doesn't violate the Constitution and everything else. So it's just, it's something it's, that's doable. But I think it's even complicated on like the depth of a business versus the width of a business. Yeah. I mean, you could have a business that's that deep with a sign this big yeah. if their frontage is narrower. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, th I think it is very complicated. I, I mean, I, I see see the, the point to some degree, but I, I do think it's very complicated. I mean, for me, I, when Tracy said it, and I'm always willing to hear more input, and I mean, that's what I think we're here for. Um, the word doors scared the hell out of me, though, because, I mean, you put a heck of a lot of doors in the building, and you get a sign the door. Well, that, that that's structure uh, right there has at least four doors, because I think we, enc we encouraged the side and back entrance or whatever. Right, the end right. Yeah, well, so, yeah, there's one in the again, back too that they're going in and out of the dumpster, right. so that means that they can put a sign right. on those two. I just think of all the conversations yeah. that we had of signs that we didn't want to see. Yeah. Right? That was that drum was beat a lot here at this table, mm -hmm. and that's where that will go. Because the more signs, it's basically adding bullet points of what they provide, which is where, I mean, you can have a laundry list of things that, that fall under that. And that, I think, is what we are trying to avoid with it. I can say that I was in a community for bowling regionals this weekend, and I was actually looked up their sign ordinance while we were in the restaurant, because I'd never seen anything like this. And I thought, we need to get around a life. Good life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and my wife's like, why do you pay attention to these things? But it looked horrendous, a beautiful little town. But my God, it was like, disaster of signage sticking here, sticking out over and pylons. It was a 
think it was awful. It made that little town just look like. I think the practicality too is like how many businesses could we possibly be talking about here in New Haven? Like even with potential property sales. I mean, we, you know, I'm not saying never, you know, never say ever, but I mean, how many parcels do we really have sitting out there that would someone would acquire, put this very large business on and? and, and I think I before we discuss it openly again, I think we should actually enforce the one we got. I was that was going to be my comment, Rob. I mean, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. the one we currently have isn't being enforced That's at all. Right. So. Yeah, right. and so. I know Tracy and I have asked yeah. quite a few times about the enforcement of it, and I will say, on um, you know, I reach out to Dave. Alan quite frequently just this week and with that reach, I mean as listen, it's not our job, we currently don't have a court enforcement officer, but he has been very he did resolve the problem. You know, you see a sign, give him a call, he has a person goes out, does it, takes care of it. So But was everyone notified of what well what we, we we stated publicly that the you village was to line. notify everyone that was not in compliance. Oh. And gave them oh. three years, I believe. No, I five years. Five years. Well, I five. Thank you. Five years. No, and five happened. years has come and gone. No, no, we're up to like three years. It has. It's I was that told that yesterday. No, crazy. Right. Right. I was told yesterday. No, they have not been notified. Okay. So, what point that letter was sent down? Yeah, it was adopted in nineteen. 19? Okay. Well, it seems like that year too. Right. Still free. I kind of like to see how this one works, and then if it's not working, then I'd readdress it myself. I mean, I'm always good to hear more, but we John. haven't actually gotten the fruits of our work. Um, we put a lot of work in that. We did. <laughs> I think it might be prudent to just see if we do get any more requests for variances for the same question, for the same issue. Because yeah. um, that may like, signify if we do have a problem with the ordinance. Um, but at the same time, if we haven't encountered an issue yet, and I don't think it's a good one to anybody, um, and I think there is, I don't think we really achieve any significant justice by, by changing it. I mean, people yeah. are able to still operate their business and still have signage and still have plenty of visibility and stuff. Like, we're not limiting them. So I think um, we can see if, if we do receive another variance, then maybe we can reconsider it. Or somebody petitions the village to relook at it, then we can look at that. Um, but that would be my, my advice on that. So. Okay, anybody else? So it's been three years, and we just now got our first question regarding it. Um, it was, if you want, do you want to fill in on the tractor supply, Tracy? Or? Didn't um, have something else to do? Because Tractor Supply built a garden center, mm -hmm. so they created another door in the front, and they wanted to put a garden center sign there. Fair enough, that sounds right. On the wall? Um, uh, yeah, a wall sign. But our ordinance doesn't allow it. So they went to ZBA, which is now council, and they denied it. And I clearly stated at the table they allowed it. that, I mean, they allowed it. I apologize. I'm talking backwards. I clearly stated at the table you brought a group of people together to work on an ordinance and we all did our job and now you're going against what we set in motion. Well, they didn't care. So I came back to, let's just being honest. Question. So I said I'd come back to planning and ask you guys what you think. Do we want to revisit it? And last month everyone agreed, no, we don't want to revisit it. Three. Myself included. No. He was there. Yeah. So that's where this is coming from. So they were, at, were they asking for a variance? They were asking for a variance to okay. put up a second sign. Okay, so isn't that what the ZBA is for? It is, is for I, for I will agree with you, but I also feel very strongly that now you've opened. So we let that business, so we have to let the next business. Right, next. so when I come, presidents, thank you. I'm So we're, that's, I don't know. Okay. I just, I, I, you know, I like rules and. Yeah, they went up against all of the recommendations. Right. And variances shouldn't be automatic. They should no. be few and far between. Correct. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you. And did with, you, did did anybody you see mention, the sign hey, I you have like a year to get your sign made to a monument sign? Say again. Did, did anybody <laughs> mention that That's you true. have to change your pylon sign to yeah. a monument sign within the next two years? 
Well, no, because nobody will do that. <clears throat> and I know everyone's sick of hearing me speak about it, including Genevieve, because I bring it up. I don't, listen, month. I don't care. <laughs> There's just nothing we can do. I, you, I, this, I don't mean this. I do the same thing, you. though. You have, you have the, you're the council. And I mean, I, but I'm one person. <laughs> right, so I, I mean, it's here. It was here. We gave it. <laughs> They took it, and now it's, you know, it, it. and approved it, and, you know, it's not really, I understand it, but I agree with you. It's frustrating for me, too, to work on something for a long time, time. and put a lot of time and energy into it, and some of it has been just problems with staffing. I, I do get that, you know, we've been in and out with code enforcement, and not having it, having it, and have him having too much on his plate, and, you know, with other things, I, but it, it's, there's nothing we hear, I mean, we could make a, a formal record, hey, could you please follow through with it, but we already did that by sending it to them and saying it exists. So. I think it would be bad to do it again since it was. Three years, to like a refresher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, just can't can't follow through, I mean. I mean I'll We're never gonna get anywhere in this I'll put it on the next agenda. I mean, I don't have a problem putting it on the agenda. We'll put another formal. Well, I'm going to put it on my notes for the next council meeting. Um, and, and Tracy has been asking for an inventory for the last year, two years. Yeah, they asked for inventory. Yeah. I mean, I drive down Gratiot, and I count like 15 to 18 that are out of compliance. And that's not including the two couple businesses they have them on the roof. That's not including the panel truck or whatever is parked in the lot. That's the one that has been reduced. <laughs> so, I mean, there's tons of them out there. Or the painted signs that have gone well, up since the ordinance came into it. I think, all sorts of stuff I think another problem is some of them have gone up and existed since we've done the ordinance. Yes, they have. Yes, they have. Yeah. Yeah, probably without the rent. With that sample, and we didn't do anything even about them. So that was by we, I guess. The village. I mean, I know we're not the enforcement, but is that where we're lending to as individuals? Does we have a formal complaint? I make phone calls. See? Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. I reach out to Abe, or I used to reach out to Dan. If I see it, I, you know. I mean, I guess I did more when I knew Dan was here. I, I'd see Dan and I'd talk to Dan and Dan. Would you know, obviously send emails and whatever. You know, Dave's it was more interactive on input. Dave is really good about following through and getting things done and he'll give you a call and whatever. So maybe that's what we gotta do is he is put our list together and <laughs> give their note. Because obviously Craig's noticed things and I mean we've all noticed things and maybe we'll just put it in a a group. Not as a board, but as a. Okay. Do you guys hit them all the same thing over? Do you guys want that on the agenda next month? To reopen the sign ordinance? No. Well. Or to talk about it. I mean, I can just put it on there. We can talk about it. Um, if you want another formal recommendation of council, and I think Tracy's gonna share with. I think they know. I think. Uh, maybe there should be something formal I don't think from they us. <laughs> I'm sure Tracy's making a okay, so I don't know. I don't think council as a whole is aware that nothing's been done with it. I think some people are aware. Okay, we'll make another formal. And I also think that it's not on their plate. So it doesn't, you know what I mean? It's not something they participated in. And, and well, how many times, I, I mean, I know, I, I don't know how many times you put it up here, but how many times have you brought it up at council? Probably just as many. I don't know that it's been brought up to council as much as it's been brought up to Mrs. Pridemore. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe, be, you know, let me know. If That's why I said I don't think council is a whole. I'm going to bring it up, actually. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, bring it up as a concern from our table. We don't really need a motion for that. No. Get on our agenda. Because you guys should be, you have a new, what do you call it, zoning firm, uh, what, code enforcement. That's not your agenda next week, too, isn't it? Yep. A person? Three persons down. have applied. Hire all of them. Right? I mean, really, I, 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 that's not a joke. I mean, yeah, you need to bombard the place. There's only one opening. 
Is there, yeah, there's is one there one. any room for a second person? Because even that's though we're small, that's a lot of work for one person to do. Yeah. 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 Especially if you're a full-time job already. Yeah. Yeah. Dan's a bulldog, and I mean, he couldn't take care of all the things yeah. out there. I mean, it's just Dan. I mean, I, I mean, if you go from signs to, you know, the spring coming up, you're going to have weeds, you're going to have, I mean, in the wintertime, you got uh, people that don't shelter the sidewalks. It's, it's no emergency ordinance is another thing that's not ever enforced. And they shovel their snow into the street. Yeah. Which is illegal. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Well, I would love to see them hire all three if I had, to, had my dream and then at least for six months and pound things some things out around here that just haven't gotten done. Okay. Trace, you good? I'm good. Anybody else call from the table? Motion to adjourn? I'll move. At uh, 7 Board. 1. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Oh, thank you everyone.